USDGC 2014, this is the back nine. We are back again. We are in the middle of an intense battle. Definitely one of the most insane rounds that I've ever witnessed uh, in my short career in this sport. And I've got the most special of special guests. I've been waiting all year to bring this guy in the studio. I have the current reigning three-time world champion, Paul McBeth with me. How's it going, Paul? It's going well. Um, I'm ready to see some disc golf action and relive it. All right, we are gonna make him relive it just shortly after he got through battling this course for four days, four rounds at the legendary Winthrop Gold. Before we get started, what does this course mean to the sport and what does it mean to you as a top level competitor? This course is different than most. Um, we're not throwing through trees, around trees, over trees, but throwing around ropes. You know, and those ropes are strokes. So the whole goal is keep it between the lines and keep it out of the water. If you do that, you'll have a chance to be the U.S. champion. And we are going to follow the card that has managed so far very successfully to keep it in bounds, to make their putts, to survive until the last day. We have a really tight race going on. Right now, we've got Johnny McRae and Patrick Brown, two Masters Levels players, are leading the field. Paul's a couple strokes back after a little rocky start on that front nine, and Will's right behind him. Let's get started on hole 10. Uh, this is starting off the back nine on a par four. This is one that you really like to go for. You know, what's the strategy breakdown here? Yeah, it's uh, it's about, it's listed at 554 feet. Um, that's if you're playing the fairway, but there's a shot to go right for the basket. And as you can see, Patrick teeing off here, it's very reachable hole. Um, it probably plays about 440 feet to get to the pin. But today with that wind, uh, it's definitely out there blowing and it can take these shots pretty far OB. And what are you throwing here? Because you have to play into this left to right wind that's going to prevent you from fading. That is a Star Destroyer. Uh, it's a brand new one. Uh, it's still got the stability. I've been throwing a little bit less flippy one. And I was having trouble, but with this wind I was able to bust out a new one. And tell me about that, that factor, that pucker factor. You're two back. You see Patrick go out of bounds right there. You've got to step up and make it and give yourself a shot for an eagle, right? Yeah, I had to go for it. I knew, I knew with these holes coming up I had to make a move. Um, it's it's a tough back nine, probably the one, probably the hardest one in disc golf. And you've got Johnny McRae is going to lay up, which is uncharacteristic for a player like him. Patrick's going to take from the drop zone, and Will and Paul are going to have looks at eagle here. Yes, yeah, so with Johnny, I saw him lay up every round I played with him, so it wasn't surprising um, for him to do it in this situation, and for him to convert this up shot, it it was you know textbook. And he does convert the guys the spotter's gonna run over get that close to it and he was so just barely in bounds and you know it's it's funny because that has to enter your mental game at some point yeah um and this putt right here i honestly told myself what do you want to be remembered for missing this putt or making it into this headwind so i was able to capitalize on that one right there is that mcbeast mode activating um I definitely felt it after I made that one. I got some confidence and was ready to roll through the course. Speaking of rolls, Will gets a nasty roll. He's trying to get some steam. He hasn't really, you know, played to the level that he's definitely capable of so far. And uh, he's got to make this comebacker Ooh, also off, off the, the bench. That's brutal. Now here's Johnny McRae. He has been just a powerhouse after that throw in on five, just playing with so much emotion and he's going to catch an unfortunate roll as well. Yeah, he actually didn't take his full meter on that putt because he wanted to stay outside the circle so he could jump jump putt at it, and uh, unfortunately it didn't work out. Uh, it is a very important to note for anybody that's curious about that. For the rules, you are allowed to take up to one meter lie, and that was a very smart play uh, you know, by Johnny McRae to understand the rules there. Play to your strengths. So we're going to hole 11, another par four. And uh, this one, this one's tough. Talk about the landing zone on this hole. Yeah, this is a very tough par four. Uh, probably one of the toughest ones there. They kind of put a peninsula of OB um, down to, the, you got two options. You can go high right or you can go low left. I chose to go up it and attack the tree up on the right and just barely stayed in this time. Yesterday and the two days before I slipped OB, but here's Patrick throwing the lower um, hyzer route. You can see 
the difference in these two shots where Patrick throws that lower, more penetrating route uh, with his uh, G-line PD right there, he's going to get that skip because that huge left-to-right crosswind doesn't affect it as much where with Paul's shot, as you can see, that it keeps it from skipping. And that's how much the wind affects the discs out here. Have you ever seen a day this windy at this course? I personally have not. Um, I've heard stories that it can get bad out here, but this is the most wind I've played on this course. and. Um, it didn't really want anyone to score well today. Which is amazing that Johnny McRae took that huge line over the top and stayed in bounds, and Will's not going to get so lucky. He's also going to have to take a stroke penalty. So this, this is a very tough lie for Patrick. He's got to get down into uh, the gully there and put enough power on this. I'm going to leave it kind of short. Yes, that this hill is really hard to get a disc to stick and land on. Um, no matter if you're throwing a sidearm, backhand, lefty, any angle, it seems to roll down to that OB, and uh, it definitely makes for the toughest par four on the course. Will's also going to line up the sidearm after Johnny McRae's very touch putter shot. Going to line, going to try to get the skip towards the basket. He wants that drop in par. That was a great shot by Will. Will have to putt for it. He's got the champs endorsement here. Uh, tell us tell us what you're thinking right now. I wanted to throw it low um, to ride the hill and get the skips up it and try to prevent the roll as best as possible. I got it up by the pin, but unfortunately got a little bit rolled down and uh, kind of tester in this wind. And if you ever needed to see an example of how wind affects a disc, how about that? Yeah, Patrick didn't like it as soon as it came out of his hand, but it was good enough to get there. And Johnny McRae with a very clutch putt. And uh, Paul, you're going to line up a similar one right here. Yeah, that wind, you can see the flag moving. Uh, nobody was comfortable out there putting, that's for sure. I, I saw you guys warming up before the round, and, you know, definitely hats off to, to all of you guys that can putt that well in that wind. Discs are going everywhere. Hitting the cage, hitting the uh, chastity belt. It's, it's a mess to try to putt in that wind. You guys did a phenomenal job. We're going to hole. 12. Another par 4. Yes, um, this one's coming down for the Coliseum. Uh, this is the hole, pretty much the only hole that you can throw a driver as hard as you want. And uh, Some people like to unleash on it, others like to play it safe, and today I just wanted to let it go and it worked out pretty well. This hole does play just over 900 feet. To get down uh, to where everybody is going to land you're going to leave yourself you know 300 to 350 feet which uh, seems like a whole lot that you have to take into account that you're playing in the wind and down so you have to get that disc uh, down to to have the accuracy to put it right in the fairway where you need it to be i do want to point out that that disc that johnny threw is his first ever signature disc and it was it was a pleasure to see how happy he was to finally get his name put on a disc Absolutely, somebody that deserves recognition in the sport. Somebody who, up until this point, hasn't been able to tour as much as he'd like, but he's really put on a show this year, and you've had to battle him more than once. Oh, a lot this year, and unfortunately, Patrick's drive right there just fell out of, was out of bounds by about an inch. Yeah, he was, uh, I mean, maybe one-tenth of a disc width at most out of bounds, and this is a tough little uh, drop zone because you have to play with the hill blocking your view of the pin, play up into that wind. That's textbook right there. Yeah, that's a great shot by Patrick. Uh, here's Will, who's been started out a little rocky, coming on quietly in the last few holes, playing solid. Yeah, he's been putting some pars together, and uh, that was a really good shot for him. Unfortunately, it rolled a little bit long, but he's, a, he's on fire today. And there's, this is keeping it on a hyzer. Talk about the importance of making sure that your disc stays on the hyzer in this kind of wind. Um, that was a firebird, so I knew it was going to hyzer, but playing the angles is, is huge out here. Uh, they got the, these hills left and right. Uh, your disc can roll at any point, and I was fortunate enough to get my drive to land in those rocks and prevent that from rolling. Will is going to line up a birdie putt, a headwind just outside the circle just misses and he's lucky he didn't get too much more of a bad roll away there he will have a makeable comebacker solid putt and that is going to be patrick for his par good par save after going out of bounds on the drive the only one on the cart to do so and there'll be a couple of tap-ins look at that 
That's a world champ level shot. Was that was that your goal? Were you trying to throw it in right there? Um, I know if it hits those rocks, it's not going anywhere, and I was fortunate enough to get it to stick right there. And we're going to go on to hole 13, 888, the legendary hole on the back nine, maybe the most well-known hole other than the island on this whole course. This is just a monster. How do you even think about tackling this? Um, I stuck with my game plan all week on this, and that was to go for it off the drive. Uh, whether or not I was in position or not to go for the eagle, um, the whole goal was go for it off the drive. And this, I unfortunately got it to flatten out, but it still almost rolled on. So I had to tee again with the OB rule on the right side of the fairway. And just to note, USDGC is a tournament where the rules often change from year to year. And this year, they're playing the stroke and distance rule where if you don't establish a lie inbounds, you do have to re-tee immediately from your previous lie. Correct. And then on the left side of this road right here is a hazard. So if you land in the hazard, you get a stroke penalty, but you play it from where it lies. Which is exactly what happens to Johnny McRae as he tries to get the Anheuser to pan out flat, but just can't get that right side of the disc back to level, and he digs into the grass on the left side. I believe this is a putter that Will is throwing. He threw it really hard and a really great line, and you know that that's a shot that most people wish they could have on this hole. Billy Crump likes it, clapping for him in the background. One of the uh, most famous disc golf videos, the Clash DVD series. We watch Patrick Brown. He's going to take the same route that, that you went for, Paul. Yeah, he converted on the first shot, which I wish I could have done. <laughs> <laughs> and there's Johnny. He takes, like you were talking about, from the hazard right, with a stroke penalty, so he was throwing three there. And yes, Johnny and Will both lay up right here. Real nice spot to go for the basket. And this is just where you have to be smart. This You can take big numbers on this hole, as many, many competitors did this weekend. And then uh, Paul's going to go for it right here. Yeah, I knew if I wanted a chance for this, uh, you know, to keep up with the lead after going OB twice, I had to put on the green and give myself a look at uh, saving a six. And this shot right here from Patrick, this is not a typical play on this hole. You can continue to go back there to be basically pin high and a pitch over at the large island. Yeah, Patrick was very fortunate to catch a tree and kick back closer to the fairway. He was still in the hazard, but he he was able to get a shot out um, from where he was. And these should be, you know, relatively routine hyzers. Uh, you say relatively out here because nothing is routine. And how about that skip? Yeah, that's actually the shot you want to play. You want to skip it off that concrete and let it uh, jump right towards the basket. And Patrick needs to play another very difficult shot. He gets the skip, and the wind just pushes him. You can see the wind get under the, the bottom of that disc on the right to the left and just push him way past the green. That's such a tricky shot to manage. Yeah, these greens are fast. After the three days prior to this, just the way that they've gotten beat in, it's hard to keep a disc to stick. And this will be the man himself giving it a run a little bit short. Easy tap in from there. And here's Will. He needs. He really wants to get a stroke right here on everybody else. Yeah, I believe this is for a four. He's played this hole clean so far. That was a great putt. Into the headwind, dead center chain. Can't do it much better than that. And this will be Patrick for his seven. Good putt right there. Yep. Saves the double. Keeps him still in the match. And that's something that... I don't know if I've ever seen the lead shift as many times as it did during this round. I mean, you guys were just giving it your all, going back and forth. It was a real all-out battle, and, and you can't really say that about most disc golf rounds, but this was truly a battle. Yeah, this is one, one of the few courses you can see multiple sevens on a card and still have people battling, so it's, it's something you always got to watch to the end, and that's what I think brings so much excitement to this tournament. And it's experienced players like yourself that know that even if you take a seven on that hole, you're not out of it yet. No, not at all. Um, ev every hole on this course can give you trouble, so it's it's very entertaining, but mentally it's a struggle. And here's a hole that, coming right off 888, tough par five, this is a must-get birdie. Yeah, the, the way it plays this year, it has a hazard on the left and OB long, um, but it's got a really small island green. Um, Will and Johnny put it real close right there. Um, I decided to go a little wider hyzer. Um, it's been 
it's what I've been doing all week. Uh, this one kind of got caught up in the wind, taken really high, and I was really fortunate for it to stick right where it hit. Um, it gave me a chance for a birdie. Now you could see you were uh, not liking the result at first till you saw that green flag, and Patrick was trying to throw a little bit more of an intermediate hyzer, and he yeah. walks up and just throws the shot. He did. He stepped right up to that shot. Didn't really think about it. Just knew he had to put it close, and it just happened to happened to fall right into the basket. That and. I, we almost missed it with the camera. <laughs> he had to make sure afterwards that I got it, and I told him I barely even did. Yeah, this is a slightly uphill hole putt right here. Just left it low. There wasn't much wind. Um, just a mental lapse right there. Are you thinking about it at this point? I mean, you've seen Patrick throw that in. You've seen Johnny throw that in on five. I mean, when these guys have these crazy shots, you got to be thinking, there's one in there for me, right? Yeah, I just had to keep fighting. I knew it wasn't over. Johnny right there, you can see him taking off. He was pumped. I don't even know if he stopped running. But he was he was pumped after that. You know, well-deserved birdie. And, uh, I mean, he was definitely leading the tournament and had everything going his way. And sometimes when it's your day, it's your day. And you just, you're making everything you're looking at. And he certainly was entertaining the crowd in more ways than one. He was getting huge amounts of cheers. The people's champion, people were yelling for him, and just what a battle. I'm gonna go on to 15. This is a dog leg to the left. You've gotta get through a double mando, a low ceiling, around the corner to a guarded pin. Oh, what's the play here? Off the tee, there's only one play. Throw it straight down there, right down the gap. It's really the only hole where you have to hit a tunnel, and uh, Will does it perfectly. Textbook's right, textbook right there. And uh, Johnny right here follows it up with a great shot. Um, that's exactly how you want to play this hole. It's like you said, it's a dog leg. You just want to set up for your second shot. And Patrick gets a little slippy. You can see the disc just kind of falls out of his hand a little bit. You know, when you when you're playing in these wide open courses and then you go straight to a tunnel or a hallway kind of shot, you know, it's an example of good course design in the sense that it tests all the different facets of a game um, back to back and got a little low on you there too huh yeah I did the same thing yesterday uh, just came out of my shot a little early and threw it right into the ground and this is this is an aggressive play right here yeah I hit my line how I wanted to I just don't know what it hit when it jumped like that uh, but I, I was safe and you know I still have a chance to get up and down and save a par so Patrick is in the hazard off to the right. He's going to lean down and throw a destroyer and try to get that skip over. And Johnny's right where you want to be on this hole. Yeah, Johnny's in a great spot. He left it a little low right there, but with those trees, you never know what you're going to get. You could be 15 feet away with no putt. Yeah, you can, you'll can. you be able to see when we get up to the green here that you've got these, these branches going everywhere. Uh, the trunks are wide, and it, it makes very routine putts very difficult. Yeah, Will played it to the left side of the basket, which is the most open, uh, which is exactly what I'm trying to do right here is just place it over there, turned it over a little too much, flexed out, and got an unfortunate skip OB. Of all the trees and all the trunks, found the one hole and just skipped into the OB. Exactly. And Patrick's going to play a nice little smooth Anheuser putter up there and, and tap in. Tap in for five. Smart play by Patrick. Will really wanted to get that stroke. Uh, that would have been for a birdie. Just off the cage again, and you're not happy with that one. No, if I knew if I hit that gap, I had a chance for it to go in, but it caught, caught a few leaves, and it put the nose down, and unfortunately missed low. 15's going to get everybody. Uh, they're going to tap in there. We're going to have no birdies uh, on 15. Will and Johnny will par. Patrick's going to take a bogey, and Paul with a double. On to 16, once again, tough hole, greater than par three, and then one you wanna get. Uh, this one is right around 400 feet, slightly downhill. You've got the hazard to the left and OB to the right, and there's two gaps. There's the big Anheuser gap, um, which Will is throwing right here, and there's also uh, the lower line more straight at it. Yeah, Will unfortunately caught that tree and it kicked it right down. Johnny's throwing a wizard right here, which blows my mind. Um, I would never think about throwing a putter here, but he absolutely parks it. 
And you can see the gallery loves it. Yeah! He loves it. And that's that's just one of those great shots that there's not much else to say about it. Patrick's going to go. He's getting a little over on it. It's carrying out, sliding, and that's going to be OB to the right. Yeah, he landed on those roots, and it kicked it OB just a few feet. Uh, and this is, this is a hole that... You know, we brought this term out in Japan. We call it a four-digit separator. This is a hole that if you've got four digits next to your name, you want to get this birdie. And if you've got less than four digits, this is a bonus birdie. Yeah, this should be a pretty routine shot for most of us. But with this wind, it's kind of pushing it towards the OB on the right. If you wanted to make your mistake, you want to make, make it to the left in the hazard so you still have a chance to save par. But, ooh, just off the basket right there and an unfortunate roll. He's going to roll almost all the way back to him, which in this wind, you definitely don't want to have to take two putts from that same spot. And uh, this is a big putt right here, a situation you've been in many times before. Yeah, I had a had a tailwind right there. Just didn't let it finish. I should have went straight down the pole, but I tried to play it a little bit to the right, and it just dropped out at the end and caught the cage. Patrick's going to chain out, and that's frustrating when you're trying to make a run, and you've got a 95% good putt, and it's just not good enough to stay in. Great birdie by Johnny. Johnny McRae, another birdie. At this point, he is going to go to a four-stroke lead on the field. And four strokes, two holes to go, you think, no problem, tournament in hand. But what's coming up? The island. The island hole, yeah. Right after 16, you have a pretty lengthy walk uh, to to hole 17 so it gives most people a lot of time to think um, some people too much time to think um, and start overthinking their shots so it's really a hole that sticks in your mind the whole tournament and you dread that tee shot because all you want to do is get it down and all you disc golf fans will remember last year when Will Schustrick in the final round was going into hole 17 with a lead and ended and it ended up costing him the tournament so we'll have to see what Johnny McRae can do. He's going to take a putter. He's going to go right for it with a four-stroke lead. Yeah, yeah that, one, uh, that one went a little long, um, and he really rushed into this second shot a little quicker than most of us expected. Um, and it just dropped out of the sky. Just a little short. You could hear him begging for it just to be long enough. And this is, this is tough right here. He's, he's figuring out what to do. How do, how do you settle down and just execute in a moment like that it's tough um i don't know if i'd be able to handle it as well as johnny did here uh he had that one drop out again and i don't know what i would do honestly but you know <laughs> you got johnny who a man of great faith just offers it up and says all right it's gonna happen it's gonna happen he puts a little more on this one the air is underneath it. It looks like it's sliding out. Spotter runs over. And a green flag. Finally, Johnny McRae is on the green, struggling mightily. And now the tables have shifted. Yeah, now Will's focus is just getting it on the green. Um, not worrying about the birdie anymore, but putting it on the green and just three in it. And he actually put it really close. Uh, it doesn't look as close as it, as it is right there, but it's on the green. That's close enough. Close enough, you can see he followed through on the shot. He held it all the way. It's down there looking, and here's your opportunity. The door's back open for you. Yeah, I know I need to birdie it here, and that's not the exact line I was trying to hit. I wanted to be about 10 feet more to the left, but again, it's, it's on the green, and it's a chance. And Patrick, who struggled the last few holes after leading this tournament a couple different times this weekend, including just a, a few holes prior, that's a pretty good shot right there. That's about as close as you can put it on the left side of the basket. And once again, the three-time world champion is faced with a tough putt. It, how, how far up the charts did this rank in terms of, of how much you wanted this putt? Um, it was definitely about a nine. <laughs> I knew I needed it, but I also knew there was still 18. And to hit it in that situation, especially what happened to Johnny, um, that... That blew my mind. I didn't think I had a chance, honestly. And just you could see, you could tell you were excited to get that back on him. And then here's Will Schuster, just a couple feet closer than you, into 
a slight headwind. Yeah, I honestly couldn't watch this putt. Um, I was over there on 18's, 18's tee pad, and I was just listening to the crowd this whole time. Tough heartbreaker. He leaves it a little high. Johnny McRae. Looked good. Looked good from our angle. Just a little outside. And Patrick, all of a sudden, with a chance, asking if he can take relief from the hay bales, which he can. Easy birdie. Easy birdie. And suddenly, it's a ball game. We've got two tied at 20. Two tied at 18. We're going into par four, hole 18. One of the toughest fairways that I've ever seen on a disc golf hole. Slopes down right to left. You have to tee off over the water. You have to stay between the trees on the left side of the fairway and get left of the mando tree, which is way up there. Yeah, there's multiple shots that you can throw off this tee. Um, I went with the rock every time. I wanted to lay up, and there's a flat spot right in that fairway, and that's about right where mine landed. And Patrick's throwing a T-bird right here. Uh, you can attack with the driver also, but it raises your chances of a cut roller. Um, down that hill and towards the water. And so he's fortunate there. He got a little burnout, stays in the fairway, and Will Shoestrick's going to step up. And he needs it to hold. He's dangerously challenging that OB with the slide, but he will get the green flag and stay in bounds. And Johnny's now down two, so he was going for this hold the whole way. Look at this. This is about as good as you can play this shot off the tee. That's a monster drive. Uh, probably the best I've seen from that tee pad. And we're going to have Patrick's up first. And so when the hole goes further left and it hooks back to the left, and there's no more grass. So you're going to slide on a mulch surface. So you've got to pay attention to the speed that your disc comes down, and Patrick doesn't get quite enough on it, and he's actually going to be out of bounds early. Yeah, I just watched Patrick's drive go left, and I happened to make just the same mistake he did and throw it OB left. And now Will has got his putter right here. All he has to do is make it to the basket in three shots from there, and he's the USDGC champion. So you can see he probably wanted to get a little further. It uh, went out right on him a little bit. And Johnny McRae all of a sudden is staring down a birdie, which puts a little bit of pressure on you guys. Yeah, Johnny parked it, put about 15 feet, and Will still puts his about 20, maybe less than that. Um, and he's got, he's got the putt right there for the win. And Patrick, that's a textbook example of how to play a disc when the way that you throw is sloping with the green. That's a great way to just put a nice little touch shot, slide it down a little bit. And you're running this, aren't you? Yes, Will's right there, and I knew my only chance is to put it at least close, and unfortunately caught a, caught a branch right there and kicked it under the basket. This putt to be the 2014 United States Champion. Just weak side. Will can't believe it. And he knows. He knows with the level of competitors in this field, if he gives people a chance, he may not get another opportunity. And Johnny McRae taking the birdie after a nine on hole 17, Johnny McRae just tied you guys. How shocked were you when that happened? Well, I got the chills just watching it right now. Um, seeing him battle all week and then being able to come back with a birdie right after a nine is, is amazing. It just shows his will and fight. And the, the love and the respect for all you guys uh, that, that you have for each other, you know, being in the top of the field and battling as hard as you did, uh, it's, it's impressive to see. And as a bonus for all the disc golf fans out there, besides seeing you almost trip on that green, we get to play some bonus golf. We're going to a three-way playoff to become the 2014 United States Disc Golf Champion. This has only happened one time in the history of this entire tournament. You know who those two people were? Ken Climo, Barry Schultz. Not too bad a company to be in. We're going to play hole 18 all over again. So you're going to go right back to it. What are you thinking here? Uh, do the <laughs> capitalize honestly. Um, I want to throw the same drive and fix the upshot. And right here, Johnny gets his over a little bit too much, but yeah. again, he's in the middle, and it's it's a shot. And never one to run out of energy or excitement. He hops off the tee pad, 
going with the rock shot again. Yeah, almost identical. Uh, you can see the way it drops out of the sky right there. It's about 20 feet shorter uh, than, than earlier. And so this is going to be uh, pretty much, like you said, identical drives from uh, both you and Will. Yeah, Will gets his up a little bit higher. He's in a great spot right there. And how aggressive are you going to be? Are you going to put the pressure on them, or are you going to make the move here? With three people, I have to go for it. Um, I ended up doing exactly what I did during the round, but I was fortunate enough to get the kick safe, uh, but it's still not enough with these two, these two players right here. I did notice you got that one a little bit flatter, and it just that's such a tough green to access, especially for a right-hander. Yeah, you can see the way that the discs are just diving right to the left, the way the hill pulls them down towards the water, and it pulled Johnny's also right there, and he, he landed OB. And Will is going to make the correction. Yeah, he puts his right up by the basket. Uh, this one's probably a little bit closer than he was earlier. Uh, so You can see he, the crowd is looking. They're trying to see if there's a green flag, and like you said, he will be in bounds with another putt. Yeah, I'm almost in the same identical spot a little further back and I had to do the same play and Will's Will's a little bit closer this time so you know it's in his hands now and here's Johnny McRae trying to force one he wants to throw it through the trees couldn't quite get it yeah, he, gentleman's he, concession right there yes he had to go for it unfortunately didn't make it in bounds and he leaves it up to you guys to battle it out for the title he bows out and gracefully takes third place once again, Schustrick on the putting green of 18, this time strong side chain out. And he's given you two chances so far. How, what, what, I can't even imagine what you're going through in your mind right now. What are you thinking? I was not thinking the right thoughts. Um, I, I don't know how I even got in that place, honestly. After Johnny taking the nine and then Will missing those two putts, um, I had to try to take advantage of it and just keep playing, keep fighting, and uh, put myself in the position to be able to win. And you guys are gonna go to hole one now. Gonna play hole one. Basic birdie. Will bogeyed this hole this morning. Yeah, Will caught the first tree this morning, and I birdied it all four rounds up to this point, so I was really confident going into this hole. This one I left a little bit lower right and got that skip at the end, but it's still in the circle. And he's gotta look. And you cannot give McBeast a look because he capitalizes on it, as the three world titles would say. But this guy's also pretty good right here. He's got two United States titles already. A couple beautiful putter shots. And just textbook, leave it all down to the putt. Yeah, this is about 20 feet um, on the small, small side hill right here. Should be made every time, but just had it chain out to the right. And this, if that's 20 feet, this should be routine. But Schuster's given it away twice so far. He's got to make this one to become the United States champion. Yeah. How he, much pressure is on him right now? After those two putts on 18, this is a must make. And he nailed it. And he does. He's the three-time United States champion. You are the three-time world champion. This was one heck of a battle. And like I said, this is the greatest disc golf tournament I've ever witnessed. And I mean, and I'm not blowing smoke by saying that at all. Uh, just guys battling it out to the best of their ability. Uh, how does this rank up in, in tournaments you'll remember as going ending the season? Um, right there next to Worlds. Uh, this is probably one of the most exciting disc golf years I've ever seen and been a part of. Uh, with the way that Worlds went down and the way that USDGC went down, I don't think it'll ever be forgot. Uh, the way that it ended in three-way playoff, uh, it's just, it's exciting. You know, now, what's going to happen next year? <laughs> Everybody is gunning for you. I mean, congratulations to Will Schustrick. Three-time US champion is no small feat. Um, but you are still the number one disc golfer in the world. You know, how will you go into the offseason? What do you take away from this? Uh, it was another good year. Uh, last year, people said it could have been one of the best years ever, uh, but my goal is always to improve, and I felt like I went out there and did that this year. Uh, I didn't have as many major wins, but I placed a lot better in those majors. Uh, this is my best finish ever at the USDGC, 
and uh, I'm excited to see what else there is. I'm gonna work harder and push the sport and the players as hard as hard as I can and, and make them all work for it. I don't want I don't want there to be any easy victories, and as you can see from this year, there weren't any. Definitely one of the most exciting uh, disc golf seasons in recent memory. So, leaving you with a question about USDGC. You now have the number one and number two record rounds at Winthrop Gold, and you have not yet taken down that title. What What is it going to take next year? What is it going to take to get that monkey off your back and become the United States champion? Consistency. Um, the last two years I've had the hottest round of the tournament, but then I've had three of the most mediocre rounds of the tournament. So consistency is what I need to get out here at the USDGC if I want to win. You heard it right here, folks, from the number one disc golfer in the world. Play your best, play consistent. Paul, we appreciate you stopping by. We appreciate you being so candid. We hope to have you back real soon. Good luck in the offseason, man. Thank you. And congrats to Will again. That you heard it here. Spin TV, USDGC. I'm Jamie Thomas. That's Paul McBeth. We've had a phenomenal year. Keep it locked over the offseason. We've got some great videos upcoming for you, and we look forward to seeing you guys in Phoenix next year. 2015. Let's get it.